That's good. How's it going? Good, how's it going? absorbing mass, basically it stops speeding. Is that accurate? That's the first I've heard of a definite statement like that with some conjecture. And that's the last I knew about it. If it's reached the point of a definite statement, then that's news to me. It might have.
Ừ.
found this last homework assignment very annoying. Mm -hmm. I, found, I found this last homework assignment very annoying. I'm good with the examples, but not the homework problems. Mm -hmm. I don't remember how to find the critical points. The critical points are zero derivatives. Yes, I understand that. I just I just didn't know what I was doing. Zero derivatives? Well, say when f x sub x equals zero, so that's what I was doing. When I got f sub x being equal to zero, then you have to find what x equals. Yeah, but you need the companion equation also. F, f sub y, y, which I got that, and mm -hmm. I equal that to zero then. Two equations. Yes, sir. That's it. The only answers I'm sure of is quick check two and three. <laughs> okay. I was I I don't think I got quick check three. It was quick check or no quick check two I can figure out, but I got quick check one. I got quick check three, but that's because there was an example similar on that's on the internet, so I just mm -hmm. kinda got it from there. Like I'm looking at two B where f sub x equals y e to x y and f equals f to zero. f sub x of uh, 2b page So the derivatives occur, the critical points occur when both of these are equal to zero, right? Yes. So um, one obvious point is the origin, agree? X equals zero, y equals zero. Yes. So that's one critical point. That's one point I got, but... The I'm others not. are when x or y um, goes to minus infinity. No, because it's minus infinity, so that also doesn't work. Oh, that does look like the only one at the origin there. Oh, so it is only zero, zero? Um... Because that's what I just assumed would be it, but I wasn't sure if I was doing anything right. Well, I don't see how you would get any others. Um, okay, what's the original, um e to the xy. No, the, the original um, function is e to the xy. Yeah. Um, well, this is a, um, in, um, constantly increasing function. It's never going to um, turn again. Yes. As x and y get up bigger, it's just going to go up, up, and up. And yes. there's going to be no more downturnings. So the origin is the only place. After the origin, it's never going to turn down again. And if you go in the direction of minus x Um, and minus y, it's going to be also true. It's going to go up, up, and up. Okay. Now, if you go along the um, x equals zero axis, it's going to be constant. It's going to be a one. Uh -huh. If you go along the y equals zero axis, it's also going to be constant. It's going to be a one. Um,
And all of this, now if you go to, yeah, if you go to the origin, um, then it's zero and all of it, it's one, but all of its derivatives are zero. So the, the origin is a critical point. But um, I think the origin is not a, not a minimum or maximum. I think that the origin is um, um, potentially a saddle point. So did you evaluate D, the parameter D? So the second derivative of X Yes, y squared e to the x y, and the second derivative of y uh, would be uh, x squared e to the x y. Now, um, if you square these, you're going to get x to the fourth, y to the fourth. If you multiply them together, um, you're going to get x to the fourth times y to the fourth. times e to something. Now let's take the mixed derivative, f x y. So let's take this one and differentiate it with respect to y. We get x y um, e to the x y. And now, um, what is x to the fourth and y to the fourth come from? A big point. X to the fourth and y to the fourth. Where did that come from? Yes. Well, what is the equation for d? Can you remind me? Um, d equals f x x squared. Where is it? I thought it was just f y y squared. Um, well, let's remind myself of that equation. I just want my memory says I think it's right. Yeah, no, it's just f x x times f y y. So the square. So the first power. Yes, uh, the one that is squared though is, it goes minus... The cross product, Yes. minus xy squared. So then this um, to itself is going to be uh, x squared. <coughs> so it's going to be x squared y squared e to the 2xy. And then if we square this, it's going to be uh, the same thing. So d, the parameter becomes zero, which goes to no conclusion. Which goes to no conclusion, which seemed to be the direction that it was heading, as to what's going on at that zero point at the origin. Because um, it's doing different things in the first and second, third quadrant, but uh, in the second and fourth quadrant then um, it's going to be e to the minus. So it's going to go down, down, down. Yeah, it's going to be shaped like a waffle. I, I can understand now the shape of the object. Um, it's going to go down in these quadrants and up in the next quadrant and down in these quadrants and up in those quadrants. So. Um, it's hard to draw, but in the first, yeah, it's a saddle, because in the first and uh, third quadrants it goes up, in the second and fourth quadrants it goes down, because in the second and fourth quadrants this assumes a minus sign, true? Because one of them is minus, but not both. So as x and x get big, it's going to go down, but in the first and fourth quadrants they both have the same sign, so it's going to go up. So we do have a saddle. Try to make an attempt to draw it in some sense. Um, um, let's see if we can do this. Um, so here it's and this card is going to go up, 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 and here it's going to go up, 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 up too. So here it's going to go down, 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 and over here it's going to go down, 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 too. So these two go down, 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 and these two go up, up, up. 
So these go up, these go down, and these go up again. Okay? So. So in a sense it looks kind of like this. It is a saddle point. It says it is the graph like this? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Exactly what it is. So Stuart, he went like this, and that's what it is. So it is a no conclusion, but just by examining the behavior, uh, we can point to it being a saddle point. Okay. Yeah. Could you do number 31 on page 1008? What's the answer, actually? 30, the answer is 32. Is the answer the number 31, 32? Yes. And they got them I got 16. Same here. No, 31 is 16. I don't know where we got 32. So, Adrian knows how to do it, so if you can put that in the whiteboard, then you can find your... No, he, he said you got 16, but he said the answer in the back is 32, but my answer is oh my God. 16. <laughs> So he says they just found that he's looking at the wrong answers? Yeah, so so much of my frustration with the homework was because none of my answers matched up with 14.2. Uh, my, all my trouble was in 13.8. No, it's because... I read you. We have two in 14.2. Yeah, I read you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, That's how much frustration I have. Okay, it sounds like we're definitely ready to put these on the whiteboard because uh, people have... Um, finished problems, but with some unexplained wrinkles to them. 13, er, uh, 37, I took a few pages just doing work over and over again, and I can't figure out where I got lost. Wait, there's a problem, 37? Yes. Wait, 13.8? 13.8. Okay. Yeah, I got to number 16. poison. The ones that are good for you. I got up to number 16. I didn't want to compute any, but no. quick check. So you said you had a quick check, too? I had quick check, two and three. AJ, you use black, don't you? Yeah. That's your usual color, black? No, uh, last time I used Okay. So let's get the color codes up here. Still just black, right? Sweet. And AJ is selecting blue. Okay, so that's a start. Wait, did you get the contacts? Yeah. Which one did you Just one. Then did you get which contacts did you get? Okay, um, um, three. <coughs> did you get uh, two or four? Not really. I'm also not really for two. Oh man, you can have three. I'll just do two. Okay. Better write your initials next to them, otherwise it's going to get confusing. No, 
transcript number four. That's going to be it, huh? Okay. Where's yours?
the same number of pixels anymore. Like I got it correct or incorrect. Greater than zero. P equals negative one. How is it negative one? Two times zero is zero minus one. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing that I haven't heard pretty much of the negative one. I have five points for the critical point in favor of that short of three. Okay, like, X is one half and Y is two. I still think that two times zero is two. Would you give her a certain point? I did it wrong. No, I did it wrong. I can't do two times zero. Because, well, because my, I have one half negative, I have one half two. Which is different from yours. Should be correct on quick check too though. Okay, um, AJ, can we can you walk me through to A here? Show me your steps that you did. Okay, this is the f of x part. And okay, the f of x, can you tell me how you got f of x? Um well f of x is tolerable, right? Yeah, we're just gonna get the derivative of this. Yeah. We should two go in the front. That's right. And the uh, derivative of x plus one is just one, so that's right. And u is just the same, so they got me 
If you use the same, then I think it still has a minus sign, doesn't it? Oh. Hmm. That's interesting. I did not see this minus sign. And that would suggest that the other one also has a minus sign. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't affect your point. The point is correctly minus 1 and 7. Yeah. So they cancelled out as far as getting your point goes. But now I'll take your second derivatives. Show me how you got fx to x. Second derivative, yeah. Why don't you distribute the two? It'll make it easier. Oh. Minus 2x minus 2, agree? Well, then the answer would be f of x, x equals 2. Minus 2, right? No, oh, yeah, minus 2. Not 0. Yeah, you take your second derivatives uh, incorrectly. You have zeros, but they're not zeros. They're both minus 2. D comes out different, true? So D, is D is greater than zero, yeah. and f x x is less than. So that makes this a maximum at. That's absolutely one, right. So it makes it a maximum. Good. Good. So you incorrectly. So now B we work through ad nauseum on the board. That's okay. But C, check for similar mistakes on C. So you found that x equals 0, 0 was um, a critical point, yes. okay? So then uh, f of x and f of y is uh, minus 6y. Okay, now at the critical point, at the critical point, um, fxx, um, at the, you have, now you have to evaluate these at the critical point, true? So at the critical point, fxx is 2, okay? yes. but fyy is 0. So their product is 0, right? Yes. So when their product is 0, d equals 0. No conclusion. No conclusion, sir. Unless fxy, which is also 0, so no conclusion is what we want. Okay? So you need to be more careful on those steps. That's what happened. Okay. You really stewarded the, those problems. Hmm? The name has not become a verb. That's a verb, right? I don't I feel that way. Okay, so let's see. Yes, that's how bad I am at English. I can't tell what the verb is. I think it's an adverb. You're saying how how well you accomplish something. I just said I failed English. The easiest class, and I failed. Conclusion for number 10 is? Tower of 2 comma 1 maximum. Um, <clears throat> yes, and now uh, working through D, which conclusion do you arrive? Well, the second derivative is it? Um, oh, that relative minimum, maximum, saddle point, or no conclusion? Relative minimum. Sorry? Relative, relative maximum because D equals negative 1. Well, you have to read the table one more time. So what happens when d equals minus 1? <coughs> now let's look at 16. Wow. <coughs> so the critical point for 16 appears to be... NA doesn't have one. Doesn't have a critical point? I can get it to have a critical point. Well, let's check the differentiation. Um, f of x is y. Now, um,
Well, apparently it does have a critical point, sure, so it's just a matter of eligibility. Um, Yes, it could be one. Oh, so okay. x equals x squared, right? That is no. Uh, I got x to the fourth. Equals x. Yeah, well, it does have solutions of one. Yeah. All right, so x equals one. That's right. Which means y equals two. Y equals two. That's right. Now you can proceed. So. Looks like fyy is going to be zero because there's no y's in there. Yeah. Um, or f, where fy is no, they're not. So fyy is going to be, you know, going to be complicated. So we'll go ahead and do it. Okay. Check that minus four. That was a plus four you had. Yeah, it has a minus sign in front of it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, two it's, it has this minus sign minus minus also. Two. Oh. Yes. Okay, that's right. Okay, now you have it. Okay. That's good. So okay. that makes it a minimum. Yes. Okay, we did okay on these. Uh, people have the technique down. They made a little algebraic mistakes and uh, mistakes of focus a little bit, but um, they know how to do these. They know how to get the derivatives, second derivative, right. cross derivatives, evaluate D, and to read the table to get the conclusions. So we know how to do things, so it's just a matter of execution. No more teaching to be done on this. I feel like execution is a very appropriate word. <clears throat> All right, that did not go missed. So let's go to the next section now, 14.1, <coughs> which deals with double integration. <coughs> um, need to make sure everybody's aware of one point. Um, Number 32 or 36? Since no one was able to get number 32 or 36, would you be able to tell us what the answer is? No, of course. Oh, I'm sorry, that's wrong section. 13.8 uh, or 14.1? 13.8, uh, number 48 is, I guess, the only one we can't look up in the back of the book. I 
guess number four as well. Okay. Okay, number four um, has a maximum at minus one comma two. Okay. That's what number four has. And number 48 Critical point occurs when x equals 9 and phi equals pi over 3. x equals 9 and phi equals pi over 3. And it is the maximum that you're looking for. So the answer is x equals 9 and phi equals pi over 3. Thank you. You're welcome. And okay, now, if we are interested um, in evaluating say, even a two-dimensional area, um, <clears throat> then as a double integral, um, Make it a rectangle so we don't have any boundary problems. To understand this as a double integral, we take a little area called dA, and we take the uh, integral of dA over both dimensions, which are x and y. Now, looking at it as a double integral, <coughs> what we simply do is move dA around to all possible places. So we put dA here, dA there, and we just move dA throughout the whole area. Okay? So all we do is add up the number of dA's. So it's one integral. We're integ integrating dA. So you populate the entire region with a lot of dA's. Now, iterated integration is you do one variable at a time. You form the substitution dA equals dx dy. So you take your one variable, dA, and you call it dx dy. So now your integral becomes an integral over dx dy. And you do the inner integral first. So you iterate the integration. Iteration means steps. You iterate it into two steps. First, you hold y constant. And when you integrate over x, holding y constant, then y doesn't change. So you don't get little dA's all over the place. You get little dA's at the same value of y. So you create a strip. And then in the second iteration, you integrate over values of y, which means that you now count strips in higher locations and lower locations. So in iterated integration, you do it in two steps by breaking the area into two or even three variables, if you would, two variables for area. And a double integral, you just leave it as a single variable a. <clears throat> so the reason that the double integral exists is because it's the limit of uh, the sum that is formed by delta A's, where you take delta A's all over the, um, all over the uh, area, and you sum them up in a Riemannian fashion. So when you pass to the limit of the sum, then you go into infinitesimal delta A's, you call DA's, and you pass into an integral. But so the double integral um, comes out of the uh, summation as it passes to a limit. The iterated integral uh, comes
comes out as a new type of calculus where you break the infinitesimal dA into infinitesimals in each variable, dx, dy, and you perform stepwise integration. So there's a difference between a double integral and a iterated integral. Uh, in almost all cases, we do areas and volumes by iteration, one variable at a time. We do not attack it directly. So let's proceed now to the next section of 14.1. You guys got 10 and 1? Do you have 10 and 1? I have number 1. Hold the number 10. Okay. You're green? for the weekend. I'm not thinking that far ahead, actually. Starting May 13th, I guess. Yeah, that's the date. Something will come up. I'm going. I'm going to Thailand for a month. For a month? In 25 days, 26 days, something like that. I have how many? I have like 28 days of user lose. I don't go on vacation very often. Mm -hmm. This 
Stuart, we're going to turn down his full front up here. I don't, I don't want you guys to see my work in progress. No, we'll wait. It's embarrassing. We'll wait.
the techniques are right. They, they disagree with all the answers in 14.2, however. Okay, so I understand your point. That's true. Okay. Steps are correct. One correct. I can figure out why I got ten instead of eleven. And now I see why. I got four for number seven. I did not do number four. And number 13, I did not do. Did you check your answers? Did you? Mm -hmm. Did you check your answers? No, no, no. 